안녕하세요 여러분 교과 박사 언니 유미입니다 저는 수년간 입시 카운슬러로서 일하면서 MIT, 스탠퍼드 및 모든 아이빌리그 합격 배출을 했습니다 오늘은 많은 분들이 요청해 주신 cold calling, cold emailing을 어떻게 하는지 교수님에게 어떻게 컨택을 해서 연구 경험을 어떻게 얻을 수 있는지 그에 관련된 방법을 샅샅이 다 알려드리겠습니다 그래서 이 영상 보시기 전에 제 저번 영상 연구가 어떻게 입시에 영향이 좋고 연구 경험이 고등학생들에게 정말로 필요한지 나에게 정말 적합한 활동인지에 대해서 먼저 판단을 해보시고 이 영상을 보셔서 교수님에게 어떻게 코드 이메일링을 하는지를 배우시길 바랍니다 오늘 영상은 고등학생분들 뿐만이 아니라 대학생 그리고 대학원에 입학을 원하시는 분들에게도 교수님을 컨택할 때 아주 유용하게 쓸수 있는 방법들이 있으니 영상이 도움이 되길 바랍니다 이번 영상에는 제가 영어로 진행을 할 거예요 왜냐면 어차피 학생들이 이거를 배워서 진행을 해야 하는 거기 때문에 제가 영어로 진행을 하고 한국어는 자막으로 넣겠습니다. Okay, so let's get down to business. I'm going to show you what is called emailing in the first place. Like what is this research opportunity? Is it the best for you? Things like that. And then I'm going to talk about how do you actually search for professors and then How do you actually email them? And then what happens afterwards? So I'm going to tell you in step by step. I have this resource page for you that I have developed. Hopefully it's detailed enough for you guys to work with. So you guys can check out the link in the description box below or in the comment section and bookmark it if you need to go back to it. So in the first stage, you will start by what is cold calling or cold emailing. I will use those terms interchangeably. So the purpose of research opportunities and cold emailing is to get this in-person research opportunity to work with the professor. Uh, remote positions are very, very, very rare. So you probably will not experience it unless we have a whole pandemic again. And if there are only email correspondences, as in you only are able to communicate with them via email and an in-person opportunity is not available, I still suggest you ask for more recommendations for research articles so that you can continue to develop that relationships and perhaps an opportunity will come by you. I had a student who actually talked with the professor via email. They exchanged a lot of research topics together because the student was actually really passionate about that topic. And the professor was very impressed and he introduced him to another professor that had a better research fit and an opportunity for that high school student to work with them. So it is up to you to create those opportunities. And if you are passionate enough, you can definitely achieve it. And when you cold call professors, please understand their research topics. The reason you are cold calling is to do research with them. You need to understand what they're doing. So please read their articles and be knowledgeable about About that field and the topic if you really are wanting that chance to work with them. And in terms of feasibility, like do you have research universities nearby where you can actually commute to? If you have to commute like four hours round trip, it's probably not the best to go that far for a research opportunity. Community colleges will not be actively pursuing research, so it will not be an option. So now that you know what cold emailing consists of, let's talk about research interests. Which research topic are you interested in? That is the core question you need to ask yourself. If you don't have a clue what to research, you better be reading articles from the professors that are in your nearby colleges. The key to actually getting this opportunity, which is just rare in general, is to be really passionate and knowledgeable about the topic. So you need to be well versed and knowledgeable in the topic so that you can talk to them and appeal to them that you're a good candidate to work with. And this is because professors and graduate students just don't have time to teach you from like A to Z what research is. You need to be prepare to collaborate and contribute to the team. So if you don't know what research is, you have never done it, you don't even know the topic, and you're reaching out to them, it's like basically you're applying for a job without any degree, any prior experience, just nothing. And that's not really how this works. So if you don't know how to read research articles or have any research experience, try attending a research summer program where they can teach you how to do research, where you can write research and become familiar with this field. Then it can give you somewhat of a leverage to be applying for these opportunities where you can cold email professors. If you do know the research interest and the research topic that you want to investigate further in a lab, then you want to now try finding these 
professors more in detail. I love to create an Excel tracker that looks like this. I have a template and again, you guys can always use this or just make one that's more compatible to your own. Basically, you want the professor's name, the topics, the articles that you've read, the lab name, the email, why you're interested in it, um, have you contacted them and have you gotten responses? So I love to have this kind of structure uh, when you cold email because you're not just gonna cold email one professor, you're gonna cold email a group, a batch of them. So it's really good to have these kind of um, structured list tracker of your own. So how do you find professors? You go to the college's website. Um, you have to determine which major or department you want to focus on. Let's say I'm interested in climate change. Then I have a whole lot of options. I can go to environmental science, I can go to environmental engineering, I can go to maybe even oceanography, um, sustainability. Fields are very interdisciplinary, so you don't have to just specifically go into this one major department to study what you want to study. Basically, you want to pinpoint, okay, which major or department do I want to contact? And then from that major or department, which professor, is compatible with my research interests. You don't want to contact any emeritus professors or lecturer or any teaching professors because they will not be actively pursuing research that you can contribute to. Instead, you want to approach assistant professors, associate, or just professors because they will be actively pursuing research. Then you want to search for the lab that the professor is running. What do they do in the lab? What are their focus? What are their current research projects? And I say current because the projects and the themes kind of change throughout the years. Sometimes professors have a list of researchers or the lab members and very rarely they have the high school student on the list. So if you see it, that means they are accepting high school students, they are more open to it, so they will be a great option to contact. And then make sure you read the professor's research papers if you think that the lab and the professor's research topic fits your interests. I suggest read at least 10 of their recent five years um, articles. Let's say I'm interested in climate change and I live in Seattle. Then you, you search University of Washington because that's a very close research university to, in Seattle. You know, environmental science would be a good fit. Then I choose environmental science. The College of the Environment will come out like this. Then what do you do? You go to faculty or research. I usually just go to research to kind of get an idea of what this department does. They do climate change, sustainable fisheries, so they do kind of like oceans as well. So you can go to major initiatives and see what kind of big uh, research topics that they're working on. I'm interested in climate change, so I can read more of that if I were interested. And then I will go into the faculty to see which faculty I want to contact. Basically, I would choose climate because I'm interested in climate change. And then all of these professors come out. Perhaps I am interested in Professor Kale. He is professor and director of oceanography. And then you read what they do, what their research interests and topics are. Basically, he does climate change. Yeah, awesome. Um, and if this fits your research topic, then you go to their website. So usually professors will have a website or they will at least have their curriculum vitae, the CV, to see what they have done and what their field of interest were throughout their career. So basically, his lab is aquatic organic geochemistry. You can see, okay, the people who are in the lab, this is very cool. Let's see what they did in the past. Um, and again, and high school students. Do you see this, guys? They do sometimes put this here. So you wanna, you wanna see that. Okay, let's see what they do. This is the important part, remember. Professors will be working on different projects at a time. Project cool, chemical oceanography outside the lab. And if you're interested, you will then read more about the articles that are related to it more in detail, but otherwise, I will look at the publications actually. Those are the most important, right? Because you have to read them. Anything in progress or submitted, you won't have access to them, but you can see at least from the title that uh, the topic that they're working on. And then you wanna look at what they've done in the past five to 10 years. It seems like they're doing something in obviously oceanography, plant litter, they're looking at Amazon rivers, things like that. Um, I am not well versed in this arena, but essentially if you were interested in something like this, you would read more articles in it. You can copy it and then you can go to Google Scholar and then type that in 
and then read it if you have access to it. Some of these articles, you might not have access to them, but you can contact the professor so that um, you can grab a copy of it. They will give it to you for free. But yeah, you want to read this carefully and try to understand it to the best of your abilities and be able to point out what of this article was interesting to you and what you can work talk about with the professor and then the same thing with these okay and google scholar is always my go-to for articles if you were interested in you can see okay like let's see who cited it because someone who cited it means that something relevant to this work and you can see some of the related articles or that what that field entails so that you can understand this you know, research field in more detail. So you will read at least 10, um, and then you will go on to similar process for these other professors. Associate professor, awesome. We can, we can contact them. Again, if you're interested, you will go to their website, see what they do, what their research entails, um, things like that. If they don't have a website or if they don't have a lot of um, information about them, then you can actually look them up on um, Google Scholar and then see what they do. So if you can see University of Washington, so this professor, and then you get to understand what this professor has done over the years and then decide whether or not you want to contact them. And then, yeah, again, you will write what they do here, um, link it, and then put them up on the list of contact. So that's how you will find professors. You can do this for any majors, any departments. And then once you read those professors' articles and you have a grasp of the field and the topic, then you are ready to email them. So how do you email them? This is probably the easiest part, actually. The email needs to be number one, concise. Like no one wants to read a long essay and an email. Professors are very, very, very busy. It's even hard for graduate students to contact them. And then you wanna show passion and maturity because research is hard, you guys. I've been doing research for almost a decade, it's still hard. For a high school student to be doing this, you need to be very passionate and mature enough to show that you can contribute actually to their work. Before you email, you need to be well-versed in the topic. Um, and you wanna personalize that message. You don't wanna mass email the same thing for all professors, obviously not, because you're not gonna show any personal passion about their work then. And you wanna also align your skills, previous experiences, and future goals and interest with their work. And then you wanna have a resume. So I have a resume template for you guys as well. You guys can go here and make a copy and utilize it for your benefit. This is tailored for high school students. I recommend having no more than one page for a resume. If you have a lot of research activities or just really big accomplishments that you'd like to show, then you can go up to two, but I recommend no more than one, just because again, no one wants to read pages of work so you don't want to send emails like this hi joe my name is blank and i'm interested in blank is there a space in your lab for a high school student i'd appreciate it thanks my name no this is unprofessional shows no passion nope. not personalized in any way so this will be going into trash do send an email like this Subject heading should be very specific, good enough for professors to actually click on because again, professors are busy, they get a lot of emails and if the subject heading is just not good enough, then they might not read it. Email should go something like, dear professor blank or dear doctor blank. I am a blank student at blank. If you're an undergrad, you wanna talk about what year you're in, what department, what university. If you're a high school student, talk about whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, at which high school, and talk about how you found out about the professor's research, and then talk about the interests in the paper or the topic, and then talk about um, how you want a chance to work with them in this research on this topic, and that you will like an opportunity in their lab. And you wanna also talk about briefly your research experience and you wanna attach a resume. And this is more for a undergrad student and it's taken from UCSC. They have a really good page for us. So you guys can look it over. And I have a template for you guys. Obviously don't do it word by word, but it should give you a brief idea of how that email should look like in more detail. Um, you can fill in the blanks on your own. It's tailored for a high school student. I suggest don't add like 10,000 sentences in this paragraph. Just have very short three to four paragraph email. Um, I say very short, 
don't make it an essay, really. And then here are my tips for contacting professors. I recommend contacting no more than three professors per week. Remember I told you to read at least 10 of the professor's articles. It, this is to reduce your time and, and you don't want to mass email because professors talk. Right? Like if they think you're impressive or then they might talk to another professor about like, Hey, this student emailed me about a research opportunity. I think this is really impressive. And then the other professor, if they got the same email, they might be like, Oh, I got the same thing. Yeah. Then it wouldn't look good because it looks like you're mass emailing everyone without a real genuine interest in that topic. So just be careful. And that is why you only want to email three professors at a time. And plus, if they all say yes, then you will have to talk to them and interview them. So having more than three may be a bit hectic for you. And another little soft tip is find the right timing. Basically, you want to schedule your email around Tuesday through Thursday um, just to be safe. Monday and Friday it works too, but then on Monday, they might have a lot of emails piled up over the weekend or Friday. They may, they may not want to work so much on Fridays. And sometimes doing it at 8 a.m. is good because professors may check their inbox in the morning and then it will be up in their uh, top of their inbox rather than at the end. But this is on a case by case basis. Some professors just work in the afternoon or at night. Uh, it depends on that person. So you want to play around with the timing and schedule it on different times and dates. So once you send the email, you want to wait about a week before you follow up with them. If there is no response after a week, you should follow up with a follow up email that I have a template here for you guys in the same page. It should be very brief. Just It's just to bump that email up in their inbox. And after that follow-up email, if there is also no response for a week, then probably it's not best for you to email again, unless you are really, really, really passionate about working with them and there is no one else who you want to work with. Um, because by then it's likely that they don't want to respond to it. And professors are really great at doing that. <laughs> So if you don't get a response from the first three batch of professors, then you want to go on to the second, uh, the next three batch. And then you just keep doing the same follow up, no response, email again, follow up, no response, email again until you get that one. Yes. So it is really, really hard for high school students to get a research opportunity, okay? but you just need that one. Yes. To make it a successful experience. If you get that, yes, then it's time for the interview or that meeting to talk more about why and how you want to support them in their lab. And that is a whole nother process. So if you guys are interested in preparing for those interviews or meetings, leave a comment below. Otherwise you will need patience in cold emailing to get that. Yes. So don't feel sad that you didn't get any response. Just consistently do it. And if you're genuinely passionate about research, I am sure they will be able to see that in the email. And if you need help, just leave a comment below and I will be more than happy to help you guys. But otherwise, this is the end of the video. Um, I hope to be back with another helpful one for you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.